Hey everybody, this is Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and this is vlog number 16. So I am on my way out from um, my house. I am heading over to the Alliance Community Reboot. It's gonna be tomorrow. Alliance is in Vineland, New Jersey. So I'm driving up to New Jersey. Got about an eight hour drive ahead of me. Hopefully it won't be too rough. Um, it is Saturday, so hoping that I don't run into too much traffic or too much rush hour traffic. So here we go. Super dark out right now, but I just got here to the uh, house, uh, the Levin house, right across the street from the synagogue. And uh, yeah, we're at the uh, house. This house was built in the 50s. Getting hot tea ready. I just got in not too long ago. We're gonna be going over to the sukkah. Everybody's awake. I was worried everyone was gonna be asleep by the time I got in. It took me about nine hours to drive up here. So they got me set up with a bed. From there, we went over to the sukkah, which was next to the synagogue, and I was able to meet Rich Brotman, who is a filmmaker and a fellow Alliance descendant. He created the documentary First Chapter in a new book. We all hung out in the sukkah for the rest of the night. I woke up fairly early. It was a pretty good night's sleep, a little humid. You can see I'm a little sweaty, but it was a nice spot. I am here at the Levin House in Alliance, and uh, back there, are the fields that my family and their neighbors used to plow. And then back up there, that's the synagogue. It's one of the things William and Myla have been doing who uh, run the Alliance Community Reboot. So they've been buying up different pieces of land, a lot of land that their family used to own, some land that my family used to own, and basically land that all used to be the Alliance. And the house that they bought is actually the house that William's grandfather the uh, Judge Harry Levin, that's where he lived, that was his house. But then right next door is the Moses Bayek house. And the house is very dilapidated. There's a lot of renovations that need to be done. So now I'm gonna take you guys inside the house. Now that it's actually laid out. Got some shots last night, but it was a little too dark. Alliance. These are our wonderful, wonderful hosts of the uh, weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the yeah. farm, yes. guys. This is Will and Myla. They are running the Alliance Community Reboot and it is doing seriously amazing work. They are descendants of my neighbors, so it's kind of amazing to be able to uh, stay with the descendants of my own neighbors and the same land that they used to live on. So. And it's amazing to have you, fellow descendant, here with us, and mm -hmm. Rich Brotman, fellow descendant of the neighboring community. Yep, and then uh, we should have some more descendants coming in today. So yep. driving in from all over the country. I came in from uh, North Carolina. Will and Molly came in from New York. Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of people coming from New York, a few from Pennsylvania. and You did you hear? Came from West Coast. Yeah, Colorado. And then Colorado. Yeah, so he's, he's traveling all around the country. And you're a show cat, correct? Yep. That's right. So he's uh, he actually has his own YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description on this one. So um, check him out. He talks about uh, kosher butchering and uh, animal welfare. Yeah. So he, he he does really cool videos. He showed them to me last night. So yeah. All right. So we're off mushroom foraging.
all my socks out and made them into their own playthings, but I didn't wear these yet. Okay. Yeah. And then we're good. Um, dude, I got, I went to this awesome vintage thrift store a few weeks ago, and I got these for the double threat. You have to see these. This you should probably film. Dude, they're not, I didn't wear them yet. They're brand new. Here. You're so silly. Here. I wear your socks all the time, even if you wear them. Look at these. How cute are these? Vintage <laughs> these and Oshkosh. So, oh, these? Dude, they would not wear them. They're like $20 a picture, Dad. I mean, these are the I've, I like had to buy these. I never buy clothing. I had to buy these because they were amazing. They refused to wear them. I'm like, <gasps> what am I doing wrong, you know? I'm they're like, definitely adorable. They're so cute. And they're, one is for her and one is for her, like like one is for the little sister and one is for the big sister. It's like. Yeah, yeah, sure. From the from the sukkah? Oh, sure. You know, like, seriously. So Mila, do you want to uh, describe that for the uh, camera? For oh sure. So this is the four species that um, traditionally we gather and bring into the sukkah and use ritually to shake and kind of acknowledge the harvest. It's four plants that are native to Israel. This is a palm tree, a baby date palm actually. And this that I'm opening right now is myrtle. And you see there's a nice little traditional holder here. Mmm, smells very good. And yeah, I can actually smell it through here. Yeah. And then these are willow. Well, oh, these are like vacuum sealed here. Um <laughs> keep it fresh. Yeah, it really works. So this is on the left, right, and this is on the left, and then the fourth of the species is the citron. Also smells delicious. So traditionally, in one holds all these together and makes a blessing and shakes them to kind of acknowledge the harvest and the bounty and you know thank God for receiving it. And also, I was saying since it's a harvest, you can see these are actually virility and fertility symbols. <laughs> Seems pretty obvious once you look yeah. at them. But, um, you know, harvest, new life, all that. So, a lot of symbolism. Um, yeah. And very appropriate for a farm. Exactly. Maybe one day we won't be opening them in shrink wrap package packages. Yeah. But we'll actually be growing some of them. Yeah. yeah. Best place to celebrate the harvest. Definitely. Um, I can see your face. Oh, yeah. No, go back. Just take a little out of your face. Oh. Um, the only that's a full cool picture and everything. Just the little of um, put the chicken up. Like that. Well, what happened to your beard? Shaved. Disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> it disappeared. It disappeared one day. In the spring. <laughs> right? It was harvested. Good. 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 Look at one picture of you holding a little of an astro. Just one picture. Do this every day, you know. Perfect. Let me get a close up. Put them together. That's what I want. Thanks. You got the somebody waiting for your mushroom walk. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> I saw. A few, I know we were about to do it. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Doing seeing well. You. Doing well. Good. Everybody sleep good. Yeah, yeah. Everyone slept well. <laughs> uh, very comfortable mattresses in the house. <laughs> So. Yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> yeah. Try to focus. Howard, where's the good forest? I think we're gonna go this way, towards the cemetery. Towards what? Some foresty area, I think towards the cemetery, right? Started forming on the land my grandfather did, it's just like 
wow, you know, like how many years ago, you know, and yeah. he was growing stuff, and now I got stuff growing is like, you know, it was really like, you know, just, and I was doing it real, like, you know, easy with a rototiller and yeah. stuff, and, you know, you're just thinking, you're walking down, you know, spending a few hours, you're like, wow, this is like my grandfather farmed right here, you know, he put his sweat in here, now I'm putting mine in. So. Underside of it is like okay. not even touching yeah. it, so it looks like it's a super old. Mm. Mm. It smells good. Paper. Your paper. This is a great one. Be careful, this is a collection. Let's go to the forest, the trail by the by the cemetery. Through this way. And you can have like five of them growing around it. So sometimes it's worth just checking out these old property lines so around it. This one. Or even close to it, you know, like a foot away or two feet away from it, growing on the old roots also. Yeah, it already fell down. This is an amanita. It's already dried out, but I would show you some characteristics of how you know it's poisonous. Like, you see this little veil? First of all, it's not open, so I'm not gonna touch it because I don't wanna mix it up. Yeah. But see, this, there's like a base on the bottom of it. Now it's all dried out. You see, this used to be a veil, which kind of okay. cuts across. And then the characteristics, you know, kind of like spotty, upper thing, that's an amanita, you know? It's pretty famous. This is a white one, but they're coming red, yellow, green. It's a bunch of these. Anyway, you don't want this. This is what I showed Daniela that I was happy to find. I was looking for a picture of my phone all morning. This is called a maitake. This is a choice edible. And it grows sometimes on the base of like, this tree looks pretty pretty healthy, but you never know. Sometimes there's dead, decaying root structures or whatever, and it grows out of that. And sometimes you'll find four of these around the same base. And let me just look if it's young enough. No. Well, this one might not be the choicest of, the ed of edibles because you can see it's already drying out. And it's rubbery, it feels a little rubber feel. It feels a little too rubbery, not so yeah. fleshy. But we might get, we could, this is the kind of thing you would have to put into like soup or something. Yeah, it's kind of dried out already. It's a polypore also. I'll show you the under, underneath it, you can see it's a little tiny poly little pores. If underneath, you probably get a shot of that even. This is what I want. I picked, I picked um... I love to find these. We should look for some of these that are okay. These are also, um, oh, cool. I don't know what these are called exactly. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me look on the under, under it, underside of it. These are cool. Hold on. I don't know exactly what these are called. These are an amanita because they have like the the gills. See if you could find it in there. I'm not sure. I'll look, at, I'll look in my book. I have my uh, We'll see if any of the amani amanitas are in. Uh, Let's see. Yeah. Hold, you, hold it up. Before getting you anything. Have a D on there. Cool. Yes. Keep the. I like. No, I like you in the background. Actually, the shot. Yeah. There's a D. That's so good. We got trolling. We got mushrooms. Nail polish. All in the same picture. <laughs> Great. That's an old kind of kind of the words. You can see it used to be more orange. And it, and it dried mm, out. That would have been this is awesome. the kind of stuff that Howard has. See, it dried out. This is a great polypore. See, it's super wet on the bottom. It's not supposed to look like that. This is a, you can see, look, chicken of the woods. You can tell it is that color, but feel it. It's like almost like chalk now. It's dry. It's not gross. It's just dry. It's not fleshy and yummy. So we missed this. If we were here last week, we could have totally made food out of this entire thing. I got a shot of this. These tiny mushrooms growing out of this uh, bark. But I think this is chaga, actually. I think this might be chaga, but it's not the kind of tree that it grows on. Chaga sometimes looks like orange on the inside. Mm -hmm. This is just a tumor. Yeah. You said, what did you say your name was? <laughs> <laughs> I said, my name is Curtis Wild. I didn't know everybody, it was a small town, but I just didn't. And I'm thinking, but yeah, 
I said, you have to know my, there's even a picture of my great grandfather in the book that you, that you, that you worked on. He said to me, what did you say your name was? <laughs> and I said, Arthur Kurzweil, my grandfather was Yodel the Tinsmith. <laughs> Yodel the Tinsmith? <laughs> you're, you're, you're the grandson of you? Why didn't you tell me that in the first place? <laughs> and then yells into his wife in the next room, he's on the phone with Yodel the Tinsmith's grandson, and he gets back on the phone. 